Hi, I'm Lance with Ultimate Canine, and today our video is going to be about dog food. There are a lot of types of dog food. There, there's raw, there's food like this. This is Taste of the Wild. This is what I feed my dog. There's people that are going to hate on that. I've never had a problem. I fed this for years. I fed lots of different types of food. I've did. I've done the raw diet. I've done a lot of different brands from Science Diet to Blue Buffalo, Victor, uh, Four Health. That's the Tractor Supply brand. I've had a lot of different foods, and I've had some problems with some, some really expensive foods, and some not so expensive foods. But I stay with Taste of the Wild for quite a few reasons. So. Those reasons are, it works very well in my treat and train machine. My dogs have never had a problem on it. They seem to like it. There's a lot of variety. So this, this right here is, it's called the Ancient Stream. Now, with dog food, I do not feed grain free. There's a lot of hype on grain free. I talk to a lot of vets, a lot of nutritionists. They're the ones that are important. Grain free is a marketing tool from what I've been told. And yes, some dogs are allergic to some grains, just like do some dogs are allergic to some meats. But think about this. When your dog gets sick, the first thing that your vet does is say, feed him the bland diet, which is chicken and rice. Rice is a grain. So yes, you don't want the dog to be overwhelmed with all these grains and all this filler and all this garbage and food. But well, it's very hard because there's so many types of food out there. Now, the most important things about dog food are this. You want to have a guarantee. And this has a guarantee and the guarantee statement is right here. Another thing that's super important besides guarantee, phone number, address, a way to contact the company that you get your food from is the first people that were really overseeing dog food was AFCO. You want to make sure they have an AFCO statement on here that I think that's important. You know, some dog foods don't, but AFCO is an overseeing and they test the food and they make sure that it's up to par, like a quality control. So I look at that. Now ingredients. When you see dog food, Taste of the Wild doesn't typically do that. They have this beautiful salmon filet on here, like this is you know, salmon and all that stuff. Most of them have this beautiful piece of salmon or a steak or all of these different pictures on there that make you think your dog's eating like a filet mignon, and they're not. They're not. If that was the case, this bag of food would be like $1,000 if it was prime cuts of salmon. It's not. It's, a lot of it is probably some byproducts some parts of the fish that we're not consuming and mixed in with some meat and some other stuff. So another thing about dog food that confuses people is the ingredients. So they want the food to say that the number one ingredient is the meat that they have on the front because everybody thinks dogs are just, they just need all this protein, they're protein machines, right? So. What they do is, if the number one ingredient is actually potatoes, they will divide it by three, hypothetically speaking. I'm just using that as an example. So they'll put potato, and then they'll split it up into a different type of potato, and then they'll split it up into something called potato meal. So it's not the number one ingredient because they've split it up times three, so it's lost in the ingredients in here and it doesn't overtake the amount of salmon, beef, chicken, or whatever. So in the military, all of our dogs ate science diet. And the one thing that was important to the vets in, in the whole program, the whole military working dog program that I learned very early on is the protein content in the food. Now I try not to feed my dog over 30% protein because dogs will typically develop and can develop kidney problems and stuff from too much protein in their diet. So some of these foods that have 50 or 60% protein, you're just, you're putting a hurting on your dog. It's just too much protein for them to handle. 
you know, in the wild, they're eating a whole bunch of stuff, the livers, the prize, the tripe, they eat that, that's important, but that has all of their grains in it that they would get in nature. They're getting all of that through the animal in nature. So I try not to feed over 30% protein. I think that's very important. Some people would definitely argue with me over that, but we even had dogs at 26% protein, 24%, which is in most of science diet food doesn't crust that threshold and we still had kidney problems and we still had stuff from too much protein so you want to be careful with that now an extreme working dog that's working and working and working and working and working yeah that could be maybe you know at the higher end of that like 30 percent but i would never go over that especially if the dog can't drink a ton of water every day because they need that balance now another reason i like taste of the wild and i don't get paid or anything by taste of the wild this is just the dog food that i choose is they have a ton of different meats and recipes. So what I've seen over the course of time, and I've trained thousands of dogs at this point. And then if you include the trainers that I have, we've trained tens of thousands of dogs. So we've seen a lot of dogs get allergic to chicken and beef over time. If you continue to feed them chicken and beef over time, some dog can develop an allergy to it. So I switched this food out and I never had a problem just switching from this to the venison blend to any of the other blends. I've never had loose stool, diarrhea, any of that stuff. So I have a pretty good time with that, switching it up, and I think it helps my dogs to possibly not get those allergies. I can't prove that. I have no scientific proof, although none of my dogs have ever developed allergies to food. So I like Taste of the Wild. I like that it has everything that I want and everything that the vets and the nutritionists have told me to look for. A ton of different stuff out there, a ton of different literature. I've tried most of it. I just settled on kibble because it's easiest. It's easiest to pack. It's easiest to use in training. A big part of my training. And my dogs seem to like it and be happy with it. So if there's any questions, leave them in the comments. I appreciate you watching. Thanks.